Among the many jurisdictions already using some type of ranked choice voting include New York City allows voters to rank multiple candidates in numerical order of preference rather than just choosing one. There is also strong opposition to- Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to day 18 of Founders Month. On today's news flash, we will be discussing ranked choice voting and why some oppose of it. Four states are currently set to vote on implementing, repealing, or banning the voting system in November. For most Americans, voting entails filing in a bubble next to the one candidate they want to win, foregoing the other options. Yet, ranked choice voting, an alternative form of voting, that allows voters to rank candidates rather than just pick one. It's changing how some elections are decided in the United States. About 50 jurisdictions use it for various types of elections, including city council, congregational, and even presidential election in certain cases. Some localities use ranked choice voting only for local elections, but other places like Alaska use it even for federal elections like the President, U.S. Senate, and the U.S. House. Ranked choice voting, also known as instant runoff voting, allows voters to rank multiple candidates in numeric order of preference rather than just choosing one as they would in the more common plurality voting. And election officials use these preferences to determine a winner. Among the many jurisdictions already using some type of ranked choice voting include New York City, which adopted it for mayor and city council elections in 2019. Cambridge, Massachusetts has also had a type of ranked choice voting referred to as pro-proportional ranked choice voting since 1941 to elect city council and school board committee members. Additionally, Alaska and Maine have used it for certain statewide and federal elections since 2018 and 2020. Respectively, Ohio began using it in 2023 for special elections to fill vacant federal and county council seats. According to Fair Vote, about 50 jurisdictions are using it in total for some elections. The basic idea is to try to use a richer collection of information about the preferences that voters have for candidates than is in our polarity system, says Charles Stewart, founder director of the MIT Elections Data and Science Lab. Supporters of ranked choice voting says it allows voters more opportunities to have their preferred candidates succeed. You get to vote for your real favorite candidate as your first choice. And then you get a series of backup choices, says Deb Oates, Director of Research and Policy at Fair Vote, a nonpartisan organization which advocates vote for ranked choice voting. If your top choice is eliminated, your vote goes to your backup choice, so your voice is still heard. Advocates of ranked choice voting says it makes political campaigns less negative, can lead to better voter outreach, and can make elections cost less because it doesn't require additional runoff, Stewart says. Ranked choice voting allows you to essentially run a runoff using just one set of ballots, Stewart says. You don't have to have people come back and vote again.
Voters utilizing the ranked choice method are currently happy with it, Deb says. Fair Vote owns findings show that 86% of voters in Utah who used ranked choice voting as part of a statewide pilot program across multiple cities were satisfied. And 77% of New York City's voters who used it wanted to use it for future elections. The same data reveals that 56% of Virginia Republicans who used ranked choice voting in 2022 congregation primaries preferred it over single choice elections. There is also strong opposition to ranked choice voting. While both Republicans and Democrats have called the process confusing and voiced opposition, it has become a cause celebrity among Republicans. The Republican National Committee released the official resolution to oppose ranked choice voting across the country. And some elected Republicans are speaking out against it, including Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton, who decried the system after voters in Alaska. There you guys have it, folks. Today we discuss ranked choice voting and all of the pros and cons that come with this type of voting. Voting is a very sensitive topic, so we will be sure to leave our opinions with us on this side of things, but we are open to listening to you guys about how do you feel about this type of voting. Are you for it? Are you against it? Do you think it truly will help the election? And so forth. For today's fun fact, before we talk about the fun fact, I want to remind you guys about the Take Action page for the National Low Income Housing Coalition to still put it on your radar, even though I don't always throw it out, you guys. I want to, you guys, I do not want you guys to forget about the Take Action page. Your local community and senators and local government need to hear about you and your family and loved ones need for long-term solutions for affordable housing while all the election is going on. I will put the link right here and it also will be in the description for you guys to check it out and express your need for long-term solutions for affordable housing. For our fun fact today, we do have one for you guys. If you missed some of the other fun facts, you might want to check out the videos. It has been some very interesting ones about Atlantic City, as that is where Miss Francis is from. So today's fun fact, we will be giving you guys that Atlantic City was the first city in the United States that had a boardwalk built. Boardwalk was built in 1870. If you have not done so already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified every time we have a new upload. I thank you guys for tuning in with us.